back on a beach with this itchy thing in my arm for day one, which was mostly spent reading about this mod. Welcome to Arc Omega. Yes, thank you. First goal should be to craft an Omega workbench. Okay. Oh, and you start with a newbie buff. I feel a little insulted, but I'll take it. After that, I started exploring. I found a bunny dodo, this giant listro, and oh, in the background, pretty sure that's a pego. It's a pego. The newbie buff prevents wild dinos from targeting me, but I couldn't help but back away slowly. Guess I should probably start gathering some things now and make this official by punching our first tree. It was time to level up after that, and then I got distracted by all the new mod ingrams before crafting a simple stone pick. And would you looky there, I've already got enough stuff for that Omega workbench. I spent most of the rest of the day getting distracted by random explosions and shiny things. Eventually, I was able to focus long enough to chop some rocks and gather some fiber so I could make myself some clothes and a hatchet. I was thirsty after all that, so I stopped for a quick drink before this ichthyornis tried to snatch my dinner. Then I got the bright idea to test out this modded club on a listro. Yeah, I feel like the whole don't judge a book by its cover thing that might apply here. On my way back to get my stuff, I stopped to check out this red turtle. Hello. Psychosis? Ah, there's my stuff. Oh. And that must be that water storm Listro that killed us. I waited for it to calm down and then tried to go around. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Almost bit the dust again, but made it through and got my stuff back in the end. This place is crazy. The next morning, I found a place to stick that Omega workbench and got started on a temporary base. In this mod, when one of the creatures dies, you get a soul of that power variant and five essence from its tier. Doesn't matter if you've killed it, you just have to be close. So I already had several and wanted a slightly safer place to keep them. Got distracted one more time by the mod ingrams, then headed out to tame some dodos. There are normal dinos on this map, and they can be tamed the usual ways. But in order to tame the super dinos, you have to use kibble made from eggs of the previous tier with the dino's variant soul and essence. Dodos don't need a mate and sometimes poop eggs, so they'll be a perfect place to start. As I was knocking out a second dodo, I noticed this shiny one over here. Ooh, pearl dodo. I wonder if you poop pearls. I didn't get a chance to find out as this compy started attacking. Wait, wait a second. That's not a compy. It was too tiny and I couldn't hit it with my club, so I switched over to my spear. But in the end, I underestimated this pygmy dilophosaur and it made for my second death. Grabbed my stuff and took another dodo home before heading back to deal with that Dilophosaur. It found me first, but this time I had Ebola. Yeah, if you could just stay there for just a second. It was so tiny and cute, I felt just a little bad about killing it, but I did get this mythical soul and basic essence out of the deal. After that, I'd lost the pearl dodo, and all I could find were these bunny dodos instead. It was getting late, so I knocked out one more dodo and then headed home to eat some of those bunny dodos for dinner. Picked up some poop and eggs from our new friends, and then it's probably about time I make myself a bed. Bright and early day three, and I'm back to the grind. Got down a mortar and pestle, and then headed out to hopefully find something better to tame than dodos. Everything was going pretty smoothly till this earth compy ambushed me. I tried to fight, but my spear was no match for its earth powers. Compy ate you. And, well, it ate me. Ooh, there's that pearl dodo again. I didn't know at this point that modded creatures needed special kibble, so I decided to knock it out. This vulture tried to scare me off first, no, 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 no. but I tried to feed my dodo some berries anyway before realizing it wouldn't work. Headed back to base and made this kibble machine. Looks like I'll be needing the different souls from each power variant to make their kibble. So I started by collecting this ethereal soul from this dodo. But what's that shiny thing that fell out of it? A paragon soul has appeared? What does that mean? I was a bit nervous, but it seemed okay, so I picked up the soul and this magic charm. Looks like it gives you some damage reduction and a weight increase. Yes, please, I will take that, thank you. Fancy. After that, I started trying to kill this stone moss chops. I stabbed it, chopped it, and shot it with my bow all through the night before finally finishing it off the next day with a boomerang to collect its resource soul. But then this astral vulture attacked me over its corpse. I tried to run away when I realized I couldn't hit its purple projection, but my leg was broken, and that was that. I respawned and was able to collect my stuff, so I thought the vulture was okay until it decided to kill me again moments later. Then, on up the beach, I ran into this raptor. I managed to get to safety on this rock, then broke all my boomerangs, a bow, and a slingshot on it. Well, I guess I might just go this way for now. After struggling so much, just trying to travel down the beach, I decided to make a canoe. 
On Ragnarok, there are these boxes full of tools you can find, and I know there are some up here by the Blue Obelisk. Would you look at me? I've got some metal tools now. Hang on a second, though. Is that a super turkey? It must be a mod, because it's definitely not Thanksgiving. I'll be steering clear of that for now. I have early arc memories of the year super turkeys were set to aggressive. Lost my first set of dinos and didn't log in until Christmas. After making it back to my home beach, I set out to see if I could find anything to kill. I poked this Gorgon trilobite to see what it did. Then when it seemed okay, I killed it for its mythical soul, plus some chitin and oil. Then killed this vanilla turtle for its keratin before doing a bit of work on my base. To tame anything cool, I was going to need plenty of these souls. So the next day, I set out to get some. This cloner Dilophosaur and his Gorgon buddy will make a good start. Got a summoner soul and another mythical. I got another level too, and noticed some new knockout arrows in my Ingrams for the Omega mod. Ooh. Now that I had a few souls and some dodo eggs, I was able to tame something, I think. So I headed out to start looking for a dino when I heard something and hopped up on this rock to take a look. Is that a Megapithecus? And what is exploding? I might just stay down this way for now, thanks. Still working to collect any souls I could, I stopped to try and kill this zombie turtle. Things were going fine until I heard some beautiful music and got my head bitten off by an ultimate siren carno. It moved on up the beach and I gathered my stuff before grabbing some metal and heading back home for the evening. Oh, hi there, Mr. Carno. I really need to get some walls up around here. Back in my canoe, I headed across the water to get some souls from some beach dinos far away from that carno. I wasn't sure what this spiritual variant does, so I backed away carefully after bullying it, then ran in with my sword when it seemed all clear. Got its ethereal soul, and then this vampire parasaur tried to take a bite of me. That's not very parasaur-like of you. I missed my first vola, but got the second before running in to attack it with my sword. A few moments later, though, something started raining comets behind it. Glad I didn't pick that parasaur. A couple swings more, and the vampire parasaur was down, and I had its nightmare soul. Day six, I upgraded to hide armor and spotted something giant on down the beach. All I could see were dust clouds and trees falling, so I climbed up on this rock to get a better view. Colossus Raptor? Well, that's fun. That compy's gonna get wrecked. Um, or not. You just enjoy your dinner there, buddy. I think we're gonna head back to the other beach. In this mod, you start with a regular spyglass, but I wanted the spyglass from another mod, the awesome spyglass. That way, I can tell what kibble each dino will need before I try to tame it. I've played on Ragnarok before, so I knew there was some crystal right above my base. But since I don't have a flyer yet, I'll have to try to get there on foot. Is it just me or the giant ants a little more gianter? I dropped into the water and started to head towards the crystal spot. It was a bit of a sketchy climb, but I made it mostly in one piece. This last little bit made me really nervous, but I could see the crystal right up ahead. I was pretty excited to get off that cliff, but after all that, I was hungry. So I grabbed myself a quick snack of berries before finally chopping some crystal. Then I thought I'd try to kill this stone triceratops that was stuck in, well, some stone. It was only taking like two damage per shot though, so I got impatient and headed over to see if my pike would do a better job. Guess it wasn't as stuck as I thought. Good thing I got the crystal first. The trike had followed me off the edge, and now that I'd made an awesome spyglass, I could see that it needed a resource kibble to tame. Then I made some modded knockout arrows before heading out to tame it. But I figured I should probably try and deal with these compies first. I bowled this one that kept shooting me with ice. But when I started stabbing him, his buddy snuck up behind me. It was another one of the stone variant creatures, and I could hardly do any damage to it at all. I bowled it too, but not long after, the ice one was free. I tried to shoot it with my crossbow, but these giant compies are a lot faster than I thought. I turned to run, but I guess I'd taken too many ice blasts, and this time it froze me. It seemed like this might be the end again, but I broke free just in time. Made a run for it, trying to dodge the ice blasts, when I climbed up on this rock and shot them from above. Looks like I've got the high ground now. I killed the ice compy and then took off after the stone one when it ran away. Then finished off this regular compy for good measure too. By the time I dealt with them though, that stone trike had disappeared. Instead, I killed this bunny dodo out of anger, but this vulture wasn't having it. Pretty sure I can outrun it though. Well, unless I run out of stamina. 
got back my stuff, then tried to kill this ghost turtle until it almost killed me with one bite. And I realized it had almost 50,000 health. Mined some metal the next morning, then decided to try and tame this lightning pteranodon. I wasn't sure exactly what it did, so I ran away as soon as I bowled it and shot it from afar. These knockout arrows do a ton of torpor and it was out in no time. I fed it some elemental kibble and named it Jack when it woke up. So excited to get in the air, I just spent the rest of the day out exploring. Then tested out my lightning powers that night. But when I shot this creature, it spawned more creatures. No thanks. Back at base the next morning, and this crystal wyvern freaked me out a bit because I'm not used to them spawning on this map. I thought it would eat me until I remembered they were passive. I didn't know it yet, but that red pteranodon was actually a bigger concern. Now that I had a flyer, I decided I would go out for some cementing paste. But the beavers in this mod have superpowers too, and I'm a bit nervous to say the least. This one seemed fairly safe, so I grabbed all the cementing paste and left the rest. Normally that's a no-no, but this is my single player world and I'll do what I want. Looks like I might have been a goner if I'd stuck around much longer anyway. You know, I think that's enough cementing paste for now. It's day nine and it's about time I get myself some walls. We're just going with a simple stone box for now. I'm not too worried about it looking pretty, I just want a safe place to stay. Got all the dodos inside and then finished up the walls before crafting some ceilings. But do you see this carno here? Yeah, well I didn't. And ended up leading it straight back to my base where it ate Jack in one bite. Well, sorry Jack. No time to be sad though, I've got to get a roof on this place before it eats me too. It destroyed some of my stuff, and my dodos tried to attack it, but I told them to chill. Things seemed okay, till it started playing its siren music, and my dodos started marching towards it like some horror movie. Figuring I might be able to lead it away, I hopped out and ran across the water. Instead, the only thing that followed was this dodo. So I hid it behind this rock and continued trying to lead away the carno, which seemed really unhappy about having new neighbors. Eventually it got bored and headed on its way while I watched from this rock. Stuck on the ground again, I finished up the work the Carno had interrupted that night. Then headed out to try and tame this obsidian parasaur. Figured it would be pretty simple, but turns out I can't bolo this one. Guess the chase is on. It took all night to knock it out, but after feeding it a resource kibble, it was mine. I'm not really sure what an obsidian parasaur does yet, but it gathers berries like other parasaurs. So I did just that before running into this pego on our way home. It took my cooked meat, but we chased it down and I took it back. I parked my new parasaur at home and then did a bit of building that night before heading out the next day to get some more souls. Everything was still a bit crazy, but I was starting to get a feel for what was dangerous and what wasn't. There were utility dinos like this crafting RG that seemed pretty safe. Then of course, I've already seen plenty of the elemental variants like this wind Dilophosaur and his beta ice buddy which shoot balls of their particular element at you for varying effects. What you've got to watch for is that tier in front of its name though. The beta tier has two and a half times a regular dino stats, with alpha next at five times, all the way up to omega with 50 times stats, making even the most basic creatures a serious threat. But each tier drops a special essence that you need to make kibble to tame creatures, so I'll have to kill some from each tier eventually. Ended up spending the rest of my day chasing this super speedy spiritual parasaur for its ethereal soul. Then used it to make kibble to tame this spectral triceratops that turns invisible. Tamed this earth Dilophosaur too, which it turns out you can ride. So far I'd managed to tame a few of the basic tier dinos, but I was really struggling to get up to the beta tier. I collected eggs from my dodos and souls from these listros. As long as I was careful to check their name, they were pretty easy game. I used this modded net gun on this phoenix listro. Glad I didn't try it on that meteor one over there. It seemed okay, so I went in and chopped it with my sword until it glowed red and I ran away. Turns out it was just healing itself. When I killed it, it burst into flames and dropped a magical charm. Then when I went to harvest its body, this happened. Oh, hi there. Sorry about that. Tamed this teleporter over raptor, hoping it would help me get more eggs. Apparently you can ride these guys in this mod too. Spent the rest of the day gathering metal and knocked out this dodo before calling it a night. Most of day 13 was spent collecting souls from dilos and dodos. 
Grabbed some metal that evening and then spent the night killing bunny dodos because I was mad I couldn't get the Easter event to go away. Day 14, I decided to tame this fire turtle, but maybe I shouldn't have done it right outside my house. And speaking of my house, I did a bit of work on it today too. After finishing up construction, I spotted this obsidian feather light that night. In this mod, everything is a knockout tame, even these feather lights. And these modded beta knockout darts do a ton of torpor. But some of the higher tier creatures have over a million torpor. So I'm gonna need them. Unlike normal feather lights, you can ride these guys. <gasps> Yay. And boy was I happy to be back off the ground. Spotted this giant green turtle on my way back before testing out a new mod my friend Natural Causes had suggested. Boop. Hey, boop. Hey, boop. boop. This dino storage mod gives you soul traps, which more or less work like cryopods. But you can craft them in your inventory, they don't spoil, and later I can make a soul terminal that will help me collect eggs for kibble. Now I want to go back and tame that giant green turtle. You're giant. I've got the perfect name for this big green guy. Took it back to base to hang out with my other turtle, hoping it would lay me some eggs soon. Out exploring on the feather light later, something fell on my desk. Then I accidentally hit E and fell too. A bit surprised I survived, I whistled for my bird and hopped on as fast as I could before this ultimate plague Dilophosaur eats both of us. Back to exploring after that when this Colossus Brontosaurus popped in. It's so big it makes this regular Brontosaurus look like a baby. Yay. I was pretty happy to find some oil that night and even happier when I went home to make this soul terminal. The neat thing about it is when I put soul traps inside, it will collect anything they would drop like eggs or poop. So now that I have a male turtle, my plan is just to go collect all the variants of the female turtles I can find. Then I can use their eggs to make kibble for the next tier. I spent the next few days out looking for female turtles and occasionally getting surprised by a superpower I hadn't seen yet. Nope, no thank you. Maybe we'll try that again tomorrow. My first find was this flying dimensional turtle. It was definitely faster than expected, but I think it's stuck in the sky. I knocked it out and fed it an ethereal kibble, and before long, it was mine. This green fairy carbo came next, and after feeding it a mythical kibble, I took them both back to put in the soul terminal. I had a close call with some compies that night, and then the next day I added this controller turtle and necromancer turtle to my team. Figured out that night that some of the resource variants are a little more dangerous than I thought. It was day 18 and I was starting to feel like I was getting the hang of this place just a little bit. Put my dodos in soul traps with the other dinos to make egg collecting easier. Then spent the rest of my day out killing low tier vultures for their souls and essence. Later that evening I tried killing this soul pteranodon, but that didn't work out. Then I spotted the elusive Sharknado that night. The next morning, this giant shadow over my base freaked me out a little bit. Turns out it was a Colossus Argy. I really wanted it even though it was only a level 7, so I spent most of the day trying to tame it. It was way faster than expected though, and ended up getting away in the end. Then after this flying Allosaurus spooked me, I headed home for a change of pants. My night didn't go much better, all the vultures decided to gang up on me. Went to head home the next morning, but this beta volatile argy was hanging out nearby. Maybe I'll come back later. I thought this Listro would make for an easy kill, till it spawned in a Rex right behind me. Guess I'll have to go home after all. I need new pants again. I reclaimed my home and then tamed this plain old 150 male parasaur that night. Now any female parasaur I tame can help me collect eggs for kibble. As soon as it tamed the next morning, though, these vultures came after me, and then there's no excuse, but I made the mistake again of hitting the wrong key and falling off. Off my mount with only my hide armor to protect me, I stood no chance. The run back was a stressful one. I figured I'd get the death notification for my bird any time. But when I made it back, the vultures were gone and Onyx was fine. Grab my stuff, my new parasaur, and this random bank before heading out to tame one more turtle. This one was a self-destructive variant, so I stayed really far away just in case while I tried to knock it out. Turns out it wasn't the one I should have been worried about, though. Wasn't expecting that. Day 22, I tamed this Gorgon turtle. Turns out they can freeze you. Well, at least I'm up here on this rock. 
After all this turtle collecting, I finally had enough eggs to make some beta kibble. And the next morning, headed out to tame my first beta creature. Tried to net this beta teleporter trike, but I'm not sure why I thought that would work out. Ended up kiting it around these rocks instead, and eventually convinced it to be my friend. Beta creatures have two and a half times the stats of regular creatures. I couldn't get this one to teleport, but boy, it's got some good damage. I decided to move into this cave after that, and spent most of the rest of the day building. Here. Tamed this ice gotcha, mostly just to get its crystals. Then got killed by this ultimate vulture later that night. Oh. <sighs> Why? I will feel much safer when we're set up in this cave. As I was finishing up moving materials, I heard something outside. Then, later that night, I heard an even worse one. It spooked me, and I thought it was this pteranodon somehow at first, but I never did figure out where it came from. Stayed in that night and crafted more of these crazy modded knockout darts, then got up bright and early the next morning to go collect some more metal. The rest of the day, I was out looking for another beta creature to tame. Came back empty-handed, but I did meet this mantis with an interesting name. Came back home to find this prime earth rex with over a hundred thousand health right at my door. But that's okay, that's what my cave is for. The next day I tamed this shiny beta metal morellatops. No, 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 no. My obsidian creatures poop obsidian, so I can only assume this guy will poop metal. After that I spotted what might be my favorite thing so far. It's so cute. Couldn't pass up this giant green gerboa. It was a lot faster than expected though, and after I shot it, it made a run for it. First it headed for the water, then it started heading towards that prime rex that was still down the beach. But I knocked it out just in time, and now it's mine. This is the best thing ever. We're so fast. Oh. I took a quick picture with my new buddy before we headed out that night to do some exploring. As fast as my jerboa was, there were several creatures that could eat it in one bite, so I ended up deciding to put it in the safety of the cave instead for the night. I wanted to spend the night moving things inside my new cave base. Everything seemed all clear, and I didn't think anything about this pteranodon right by my place. But moments later, it was trying to knock down my door and attacking my featherlight. Tried to get it put in its soul trap, but that didn't go as planned. Ended up managing to get it with this soul gun, and spent the rest of the day being terrorized by the pteranodon. <laughs> At one point I thought it had lost interest in me, but I was mistaken. I tried multiple times to lead it away. Eventually I gave up and spent the rest of my day stabbing through its 20,000 health. After that fiasco, I spent the night and the whole rest of the next day inside the safety of my cave doing mostly boring things like making gum powder, collecting gotcha crystals, and deciding how much poop my soul terminal should collect. The next morning, I got some gates up on the opening of my cave and then headed out to go find something else to tame. I decided to tame this male lightning trike so I could collect eggs from any female trikes I find, but as usual in ARK, things didn't go exactly as planned. First, it got me with its lightning, then I accidentally jumped off while trying to avoid the next one. Somehow I managed to survive the fall and ended up putting it on the run this time. Headed out the next morning to find that Prime Rex was back and right outside my door this time. That's a little bit too close for comfort there, buddy. It's so cute. Oh, no, 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 it's not that cute. Back to looking for things I could tame, I spotted this really cute pygmy bronto. I didn't have the kibble to tame it yet, but I did run into this familiar parasaur so I could get some summoner eggs. Oh, firepower. That was a firepower. Look at that power. Whoa. It's so cool. It's bad. It's like a black hole or something. On the way back home that night, I spotted several interesting creatures including this spiritual ice wyvern, which is frighteningly fast. That night, I made some kibble and took stock of what I had. I had all 12 different souls and plenty of dodo eggs to make all of the first tier kibble, but still needed to tame six more variants to get their eggs to make the next tier kibble. The next day, I headed out to tame that super speedy wyvern. In this mod, they're a regular knockout tame, 
And this one's just a basic tier, so I've got the kibble I need to tame it. With these modded knockout darts, it was only going to take one shot. But as fast as this thing is, I'm not sure how I'm going to get it. I thought I got lucky when it got stuck down in these trees until I realized something had spawned in a tech quetzal and a brood mother. Yeah, nope, not going down there. While I was watching that craziness, a flying compie attacked me. But things calmed down and I eventually made it down to the beach with the ice wyvern. After watching it get stuck in the trees earlier, I decided I could use that to my advantage. My strategy worked, but after I missed the first shot, my gun glitched and wouldn't let me shoot again. By the time I sorted that out, the wyvern had already escaped, but I shot it just as it flew away. I ran right up to it after it fell when this dilo gave me a heart attack. Yeah, oh my god, no. Then this trike decided it was mad too, but I guess it changed its mind when it saw me net this Dilophosaur. While I waited for it to eat its ethereal kibble, I continued my search for low-level tames to add to my egg farm. This zombie parasaur will be perfect for some nightmare egg. By morning, my new ride was ready to go, and boy was it fast. Catch me now, boys. That was so fast. Spiritual variant creatures have two times the speed of their normal counterparts, which can be really useful for most things, but I didn't realize what a problem it would be if I got fear roared. Oh, this is a problem. We go really fast. I don't know where we're going. After that scare, I spent most of that day out exploring and enjoying my new speed until I spotted this blizzard turtle. Nature! I was pretty excited to finally find something that would give me nature eggs, but this compie wasn't having oh, it. Oh, jeez. No, 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 no. Then I must have had my headphones on because I never even heard this reaper get spawned in behind me. No, 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 no. Thank you. Oh, my God. Apparently, the random variant creatures spawn in, well... Random creatures. Now that all that's over, back to trying to tame this blizzard turtle for some nature eggs. Shoot it and run. And shoot it and run. I shot it and ran, but that didn't stop it from getting me with its blizzard storm. And then, after I knocked it out, I realized it had a friend nearby I hadn't even noticed. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. What are you? Are you mad? You're cute. You're so cute. Early the next morning, I found this harvesting parasaur and tamed it for its utility eggs. After that, I spotted this giant Gallimamamus before heading on down the beach to pick a fight with this Paragon Parasaur. I figured it would be an easy fight, but boy was I wrong. My wyvern was doing reduced damage and it hit me for almost 500, so we had to get out of there. Spotted this uncontrollable turtle on the way back home. This would get me one of the last eggs I needed, Rage. Its name and its whopping 60,000 health had me curious, so after I knocked it out, I looked it up in the guide. Looks like you can tame this variant, but you can't control it with with whistles or ride it. And when my turtle woke up, it wasn't following me, it just sort of took off on its own. Yeah, let's cryo you up before you get us into any trouble. That night, I tamed my second beta creature, and I was starting to move on up the tiers. Soon, I'll be able to tame one of the alpha creatures, which has five times the stats of a regular dino. That night, I gathered all the metal I could carry, which was a lot. Not only is this spiritual wyvern super fast, but it's also got really high weight. So I filled it up with as much metal as I could find and headed back to my cave. It was a bit tricky to get inside, but I eventually got it sorted out. After dropping off my metal, I named my ice wyvern Elsa and spent the rest of day 33 inside my cave doing boring things. Day 34, I started a bit of a garden. Day 35, I found a couple more beta creatures to tame and this element Dilophosaur. Day 36, I finished the garden for now and then headed out to get some more cementing paste from the super beavers. Elsa's super speed and unlimited weight will make this a bit easier, but one bite from the wrong beaver and we'd be toast. So after making sure the coast was clear, I grabbed what I could and we flew off without looking back. Back at base, I got down a grill, a fridge, and a generator, but for some reason couldn't get the generator to power my fridge. So I gave up and spent the rest of the day collecting rocks. The Omega mod has this cool multi-tool that switches between hatchet, pick, and sickle. This might be one of my favorite things about this mod. Later that night, I picked a fight with this cloner RG. I guess I shouldn't have been surprised that it spawned a clone of my Elsa to fight us. I finished off the RG and left the clone to despawn. Then headed out the next day to build a wyvern trap. Despite Elsa being pretty awesome, she was only basic tier and didn't have a lot of health. It was time we find something a bit tougher. 
I tested out the trap the next day with Elsa and then tamed some Listros for their eggs. I was pretty excited about this Meteor Listro, which will give me Cosmic Eggs for Cosmic Kibble. And it's the last one I need to finish out the basic tier of variants. That night, I spotted this Beta Plague Ice Wyvern, but I realized even with my trap, this was probably going to be a bit sketchy. Maybe I should tame a few extra flyers for backup first. Ended up taming this Earth Variant Crystal Wyvern, and this Beta Water Pteranodon I named Waterboy. But when I made it back to base, this Omega Fire Wyvern with only like 500,000 health was hanging out by my front door. The Omega variants have 50 times the stats of regular dinos, so maybe I'll just wait a minute. It eventually chased something else down the beach, and I made my way inside to do some organizing that night. Spent pretty much the entire next day unsuccessfully searching for a wyvern I actually had the kibble to tame. Then spent the night and most of day 42 fighting with this generator. I'm not sure what was going on, but for some reason I couldn't get it to power this fridge. After giving up again on the electric, I headed out to check out this ice cave. I've played on Ragnarok before, and I know there are a ton of loot drops you can grab just by flying in here. Normally bears are your main concern, but apparently with this mod, wyverns will spawn about anywhere. I was freezing to death by the time I was done, but back out of the ice hole we go. Later that night, I finally spotted a wyvern I could tame with my trap. I could barely see the beta crystal fire wyvern in the sky, but it didn't take it long to see me when I flew in with Waterboy to get its attention. Despite it trying to roast me, I almost had it trapped the first time, but I was a bit too late trying to place this gate. Let's try that again. My gate placement wasn't ideal, but looks like it's stuck to me. 28,000 torpor later made it my friend, and we spent the rest of the day out chomping things. The next morning, this Omega Fire Wyvern was still hanging about my base. Maybe I can just lead him up. Uh, never mind, I think he sees me. Guess I'll definitely just lead it away now. If you'll just follow me this way, please. Now I can go back and try to sort out this electrical situation again. But all this S-plus stuff snaps in weird ways, and I don't like it. Ah, there we go. And look, it works now. I don't know why, but I'm not going to complain. And now I need more stuff. Collected another turtle on day 46, then spent the rest of my time out terrorizing the map with my new crystal wyvern. Finally killed one of these golden loot creatures on day 47. And would you look at that? It gives you loot. Continued terrorizing things. These resource creatures take reduced damage, so despite only being a beta creature, my crystal wyvern was pretty tough. Maybe not that tough, though. Might leave that thing alone. Ooh, look! It's a giant moss chops. It's an omega, though. Can't tame it yet. Well, look what I've done now. Guess there was enough water there to dismount me. Got my stuff back and headed back to base to find I had an unexpected visitor inside. Um, is that a death worm? That is not okay. Not okay. Thankfully, when I logged back in later, it was gone. Back to the ice cave now. Maybe I'll find something good this time. Well, that will do. After getting an ascendant long neck with 500% damage in the first loot drop, the rest just seemed pretty blah. Checked the crops and eggs again to see what kibble I could make, and then headed out to see what I could take. But when I stopped to watch and see who might win this battle, something unexpected happened. Well, this is not good. Not good at all. Just as I was starting to get worried, it let me go. Guess now I know what the thunderstorm variants do. Day 50 was a fun one. I decided I wanted to tame something a bit more interesting. And just above my base, I spotted this plague shadow mane. I found a ledge and put water boy up just to be safe. Then shot it with one of my super tranks with my new ascendant rifle. I should have realized that things were going a bit too smoothly, though, and shouldn't have been too surprised when this saber tooth came out of nowhere. I ran and scrambled up this ledge to safety, or so I thought. I guess that one's just invisible. And now my stuff's surrounded by a ghost velonosaur and some sort of super rex. I waited patiently for a moment and then grabbed this opportunity when they both weren't looking. Now it's time to go test out our new critter. I've honestly never really used Shadow Main much, but boy, it's a lot faster in water than I realized. And this one's got a pretty good bite, too. I got just a tad bit nervous fighting this Ice Storm Argentavis, but then I remembered I had a little storm of my own I could use. Named my new friend Sassy and then nabbed another turtle that night. Now I think I might demolish my old house and replace it with a greenhouse. I've been using a ton of vegetables for kibble, and my little crop plots just aren't cutting it. 
After spending an entire day gathering metal and crystal, it was finally time to build on day 53. This glass box and a couple pillars should do the trick. Day 54, I was out for a stroll with Waterboy when this beta miracle void worm came flying in out of nowhere. And holy cow, is it fast. I ducked under it, but it was on me in no time, biting at my heels. I thought maybe I could lose it down in this ravine with the trees, but it managed to take a bite of me anyway. Just a few more bites like that and that'll be the end of Waterboy. Decided at least maybe I could lead it to my trap, but it lost interest at some point. I think that's fine though. I'm okay with that. You just go terrorize someone else, thanks. Today's not all bad though. Just as the sun went down, this giant RG popped in. It's an Alpha Colossus variant and I'm pretty sure I've got the kibble to tame it. You're gonna be my new best friend. Well, if whatever that was doesn't kill us all first. I named my new buddy, Ah. Uh, no, that was an accident. I actually named him Fred. And Fred's so giant and awesome, I even took a moment to take a picture of him with my wyverns and me. I look so small, I bet you didn't even see me there. But the coolest thing about Fred is he can pick up bigger creatures too, like this beta wind trike. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure regular RGs can't pick up trikes. Still can't pick up this Brano though, and that makes me sad. So I switched back over to Sassy for a minute, and this mess happened. Made my way back, and Sassy was fine, so we continued terrorizing the beach. All of the kibble and fancy knockout arrows in this mod require essence and souls that you collect from the variant creatures. So I was constantly killing all the creatures I could to collect them. Finally made myself some flak on day 57, and discovered these amazing healing potions that come with this mod. Then Fred and I decided to try and deal with that miracle void worm that tried to chase me the other day. It did not go well. Turns out void worms dismount you, and the miracle variant makes everything around attack you. This was not a good combination. I fell into the water and my RG started attacking who knows what variant turtles. This could get really bad really fast. Luckily though, Fred got his focus back on the void worm as it circled back around to take a bite of me. And that one bite took almost all of my health. Come here Fred, we're getting out of here. Maybe I'll just do some gardening now. Yeah, that sounds nice. Later that night, I headed out with Fred and we spent the whole next day out killing things for more souls and essence. Except these terror birds and their minions. Yeah, I think I'll just leave you guys alone. Spent most of day 59 in the desert where I killed this Omega Jug Bug. It dropped this extra shiny Omega soul I had to pick up along with this magical charm. That could be useful. After that, I tamed a couple more creatures for their eggs and then almost got blown up by this Listro. Collected a couple more Omega Souls on day 60. Apparently these souls are used to summon their specific variant boss. And if I want to turn one of my creatures into a godlike tier, I'll have to get the soul from that variant's particular boss. Which might be easier said than done. Grabbed a couple more beta creatures for their eggs before heading home. Yes, that was a saber tooth. Apparently they lay eggs in this mod. I had most of the beta variant eggs at this point and knocked out this alpha necromancer parasaur the next morning. I'm pretty excited to get to the prime tier next, which has 10 times the stats of normal dino. Sort of like this prime vulture that just came out of nowhere to kill me. And here I thought I could just spend the day off working on the greenhouse. Day 63 was mostly spent trying to make super armor with this imbue bench. Ooh, I could get used to this. After that, I decided to check out what I'd need to make this Omega Beacon I just unlocked. Guess I know what I'll be doing tomorrow. We're getting some crystal. After gathering some materials for the beacon, I stopped to kill this Omega Wolf I spotted. But when I went to finish off its friends, they weren't very happy with me and Fred. The Gorgon Wolf froze me and I have no idea where this Colossus came from. But in just a few seconds, they jumped through half of Fred's over 100,000 health. Maybe I'll just go home and tame this turtle instead. Back to gathering more materials on day 65. I need polymer, which is usually pretty easy to get from penguins, but these super penguins make it a little more interesting. Looks like I'm also going to need more cementing paste. Guess it's back to the super beavers. Spent the next morning taming this obsidian saber tooth. Then headed out that night on Sassy to gather some silica pearls. I'd started out intending to make an Omega beacon with all these materials, but I think I might make a Kim bench first instead. I'll be able to make things much faster now. Day 68, I realized I could use this green fairy turtle to heal things. 
I ended up naming it Tinker Shell, then tamed this alpha gamma ray turtle for its eggs, before spending my entire night trying to kill this omega astral turtle. Finally killed it the morning of day 69, but this omega wind vulture wasn't very happy about it. But that's okay, I'll just take two omega souls today. After that, I thought I'd tame this Listro, but it didn't work out. Well, this Alpha Necromancer Pteranodon will help my collection. You're still the prettiest though, Fred. Don't worry. Day 70 was a boring one, but on day 71, I decided to tame this Alpha Absorbent Void Worm. I bit it once with Waterboy, but it had no interest in us. Well, maybe I could make that work to my advantage. While it was busy chomping things on the beach, I started tranking it from in this skeleton. That was easier than I expected it to be. Turns out absorbent creatures can absorb damage for the creatures around them for a limited amount of time. Which is pretty cool, but its bite is just sad. I think I might just park you for now. Stuck down this glowing bookshelf and an egg collector, then made a bunch of narcotics before heading out to find something cool to tame the next day. Looks like I've found the perfect friend for Fred. No way could I pass up this giant green Rex. This thing's so big, I don't think I could miss it if I tried. Pretty excited about knocking it out, I went to check my kibble when I realized I only had alpha mythical kibble. That means I'll have to find and tame a female alpha mythical creature, then wait for it to lay an egg so I can make kibble for this guy before he wakes up. I spent the rest of the day searching, but no luck. Day 73 wasn't really any better. I found a couple other creatures I needed, almost got killed by a lightning ant, and then saw this giant snail. Just as I was starting to get worried I wouldn't find one in time, I spotted this Alpha Siren Dimorphodon. You'll do perfect. I stuck down a sleeping bag and headed in to tame it, but must not have noticed this Omega Rampage Dimorphodon hanging out right behind me. Turns out it only took the one shot though. When I came back to get my stuff, it was knocked out and waiting for me. Now I just need any variant male Dimorphodon so I can collect some eggs. I do not have time for you right now, Mr. Compy. I stuck them both in the soul terminal and then headed out to check on my Rex while I waited for them to make an egg. Looks like we were getting dangerously close, but when I headed back, the egg was ready. Rushed back as fast as I could and got there just in time. Finally, after all that, this prime Colossus Rex was all mine. Got him all saddled up. I know it's dark, but I just couldn't wait to take him out for a ride. This might be my favorite super tame yet. Now if I could just figure out how I'm supposed to get down from here. Took the big green guy home to get healed up by this little green guy. Then headed out to collect some more souls and polymer with Fred. Finished up the evening with a bit of light reading, then went out and tamed this ghost turtle. Ooh, now I'll be able to make nightmare kibble. Ended up killing this phoenix pteranodon to take its omega soul. It's okay though, it'll come back anyway. But wait a second, can a phoenix come back if it falls in the water when it dies? Later that day it rained and I headed to the swamp. There are a ton of snakes here and that might be a good way to find the missing variants I need for eggs. This particular one didn't go easily. It summoned a bunch of bats and sent them after me. Didn't stop me from knocking it out though. Took this guy back home to tame, but my lack of planning ended up with it blowing up part of my greenhouse. Hey now, I need that. Took a little break to build an indie cooker after that, then headed out on Sassy when I spotted this Omega Soul. It was surrounded by some dangerous things I wasn't very sure about, but I've got the perfect solution for that. Now if I could just figure out a safer way to get down from this guy. He was pretty proud of himself after all that. I think I've got the perfect name for you. You shall be known as the Jolly Green Giant. And now we're caught in a tornado. Day 79 was pretty interesting. Killed this very angry turtle and then almost got one-shotted by this self-destructive parasaur. With some higher tier creatures having a really low spawn rate, I was spending a lot of time just flying around looking for one I actually had the kibble to tame, while also keeping an eye out for any creature that would help me finish out my kibble tree. Like this prime siren turtle that I almost froze instead of dropping. Oops. Sorry, buddy. I knocked it out to tame and then fed it some prime mythical kibble when this pego came out of nowhere. Ooh, I like this turtle. This shiny basilisk caught my eye that night. I think with this mod, all the DLC creatures spawn on every map. The next morning, I killed this surprisingly tough dung beetle for its omega soul, then knocked out this beta psychosis lystro for its rage eggs. Accidentally landed on these very angry terror birds. Sorry, excuse me, didn't see you there. Next, killed this golden megaloceros for its loot. 
Something about this reminds me of pinatas. Headed to the desert that night for an even better source of polymer than penguins. Mantis. Unlike penguins, these guys are already pretty tough. Now that they've all got superpowers, that makes this even more interesting. After collecting plenty of polymer, I spent day 82 out taming more things for eggs. Like this trike that makes a tornado, this parasaur that makes a giant gamma ray from space, and this beta wood trike. Yeah, it, it just poops wood. Ran into this regular Alpha Rex that night. Still can't tame these guys, but that's okay. My Alpha RG is way better anyway. Day 83, this roar scared the crap out of me. At first I thought it was this Pteranodon until I spotted this boogeyman rhino. I see you there. Bye. I was still searching for an awesome creature to add to my team. This prime spiritual pteranodon will be good for kibble eggs, but its 10k health is nothing in this mod. Back at base that night, I decided to pick on some compies out front, but this psychosis variant made Fred go a little crazy. Thanks, Fred. Thanks a lot. After all that mess, I spent some time in the base organizing all the junk I'd collected. Do I need an apprentice stone axe? Probably not, but I'm keeping it just in case. For the next tier kibble, I'm going to need a lot of sweet veggie cakes. And for that, I'm going to need a lot of honey. I found some beehives near base to raid. I wonder if there are super bees inside these. The hives seem normal, but I can't say the same for the nearby bat. This one hit me with its earth powers, and I was afraid to stick around to see what powers its buddies might have. After making sure they were safely away, I headed back to gather just a bit more at the end of the day. Day 85, I headed out for some adventures with Sassy. After gathering all that honey, I'd realized that with the S Plus mod, you can make a domesticated beehive. Yeah, it only takes like 250 rare flowers to make it. Couldn't resist crossing this log here. Hakunama. Oh, that doesn't look quite like I thought it would. This Firestorm Pteranodon looks pretty cool, though. Now I'll be able to make Prime Elemental Kibble. I continued my adventures with Sassy that night, but this time with a little bit of commentary from my daughter. Oh my gosh, that was so much damage. You just killed it. You should get one that has the black roll power, because that's kind of cool, isn't it? Whoa. When I stopped to tame another creature for its eggs, she got bored and left to play Slime Rancher. To be honest, I was getting pretty tired of it myself, but in order to tame the toughest creatures for my team, I had to work my way up each tier. So I made my way back with my flowers and stuck down a beehive before heading out on a two-day taming spree. Now I just need one more thing to make the veggie cakes for ultimate kibble. So I headed off to the desert for some sap. When I found the trees I needed, this metal lamantria blew their tops right off. I guess explosions and leaves are just too much for my PC. Oh, excuse me, didn't see you there, Mr. Carno. I started off day 90 by putting on the veggie cakes to cook before heading out to gather black pearls for my Omega Beacon. Luckily, I live right here in Viking Bay where you can find plenty of these Eurypdids that give you black pearls when you kill them. But as usual with this mod, everything is more interesting when the creatures have superpowers. I'd attack one and ten more would come out from under nearby rocks and there was no telling what superpowers they might have. My plan was to escape to land from time to time to heal, but apparently one of them spawned this rock golem to attack me. I headed back in for just a few more pearls, but this ultimate shark snuck up on us and scared me and Sassy both. You know, I think I've got enough pearls now anyway. Gathered a little more metal after that. Oops. Sorry, Fred. Day 91, I realized you could upgrade your saddles, too, in this imbue bench. Yes, my Rex definitely needs increased swim speed. I also finally used those veggie cakes to make some ultimate kibble, which I used to tame this ultimate Earth Terra. So now I'll be able to use its eggs to tame an Omega, just like this Earthstorm Argy. I actually had my eyes on an ultimate ice aloe first, but then this Omega RG decided to eat him for dinner instead. I think this time I might play it safe and build a trap so it doesn't end up eating Fred. As I was placing the gates though, I made the mistake of letting it sneak up on me. Now wait a second, the trap isn't done yet. I was pretty worried about Fred, so I flew back as fast as I could, but they were both just chilling when I returned. I was a bit cold myself, so I suited back up before I finished my trap. I switched back over to my Obsidian Featherlight Onyx to try to lure it in. The resource creatures take reduced damage, so hopefully it won't kill us in just one shot. These S Plus doors are still pretty new to me, and I'm not sure if I'm doing this right, but it took me all night to try and trap it. I think I found about every way possible to screw it up, before I finally got the timing right and got it in. Cold and hungry, I took a moment to stop and make a campfire. 
Then, just as I was about to go trank my new bird, this scorpion snuck up behind me and tried to trank me instead. I panicked at first, but then I realized I should probably run away from my trap. I have no idea what superpowers this scorpion has, and that could be bad. Picked him up with Fred, and turns out it was a prime cloner scorpion. So it spawned in a not-so-pretty clone of Fred to attack me. It got bored after I killed the scorpion, though, so I headed back to make another fire before finally knocking out my Omega RG the next morning. I was pretty excited to tame my first Omega creature, but I was even more excited to murder everything on the beach with it. We'll just level this thing up to 1.2 million health. Guess that'll do for now. If only I'd gotten those 40 points in something other than food. Named the new guy Big Bird and then ended up back on Fred because he's a fast boy. He's also pretty tough too, which is useful when things spawn random reapers on your head. This ultimate supernova raptor would have one-shotted my Ice Wyvern Elsa. With day 100 getting closer and closer, I was determined to find some more creatures that could help me defeat the boss. Maybe this Omega Wind Dire Bear can help. I led her and her buddy down into this crater before playing peekaboo for a while with its wind blast. After a few shots, it was on the run, but I overestimated my accuracy with this last one. Switched over to my ultimate darts and then followed the bear on Fred. Art creatures aren't very smart sometimes, and I thought this one was just running in a stupid direction. Turns out I was the stupid one. When I came back, Fred was fine. I'm starting to think there's something with this mod that makes wild creatures lose aggro after you die. No complaints for me, though. I'm pretty sure without that, Fred would be dead. I gathered up my things and then finished up the job when these giant ants gave Fred quite the scare. I'm not a fan of bugs either now, but really, Fred? After I knocked it out, this little yellow bear reminded me of someone. I think I'll name you Winnie. Day 94 was here and I'd finally finished up my Omega Beacon. Turns out you can summon regular creatures with souls too instead of just bosses. Sounds like a good time to do some science. I was nervous at first so I stuck in just a few souls. Guess you have to have at least 10 souls. Fine, here, take 11. A countdown timer started and I ran away. I've got no idea what's coming out of this thing and I'm not ready to risk my tames. And it's a wind Dilophosaur. Well, that was a waste of 10 elemental souls. At least I can get one back. After that disappointment, I spent the rest of my day taming this ultimate gamma ray turtle. Not only will I be able to use its eggs to make Omega Cosmic Kibble, but it's also got over half a million health while, and the gamma ray attack does a ton of damage. Apparently it has better range than I realized too. Well, I wasn't expecting that. I shot it again, but from quite a bit further away this time, and later that night it was mine. With only five days left, I traded my torches for lamps that night, then spotted this ultimate blizzard RG bright and early the next morning. It was too busy trying to harvest this pearl creature and didn't care about me. Oh, wait, now it cares. And now it doesn't care again. I knocked out the blizzard RG, but I noticed something was still attacking the pearl creature. It was so small, I could hardly see it, but it was this tiny, prime, pygmy RG. It was so cute, I couldn't resist, so I waited for the right moment and took my shot. After it fell to the ground, though, it just sort of started sliding away. Wait, where you going, buddy? No, don't go in there. Well, so much for that. At least I've still got my blizzard, RG. Or maybe not. Turns out I don't have the eggs for ultimate nature kibble. As my search continued for something to tame, I spotted this giant space whale, a flying basilisk, and then killed this giant dung beetle for its omega soul. The day wasn't over yet, though, and I've found an Omega Supernova Dumorphodon. Ooh, that could be cool. With my Ascendant Rifle and Ultimate Darts, it should just take one shot to knock it out. Guess that's all it took for it to kill me, too. It was asleep, though, so we'll call it a success. And after a quick run back to base for Kibble, it was all mine. I named him Blue, and in this mod, you can ride these guys. So I spent the night testing him out and terrorizing the skies. I was pretty happy with its 30,000 damage bite, but it wasn't until the next day that I discovered its true power. Its special supernova attack absolutely devastates anything near me. I like this superpower. Back to the grind after that, I spent the rest of my day out taming more things for eggs. Until this Demorphodon spawned in his rock golem bodyguard that swatted blue just like a fly. Spent the morning out on day 97 testing out Winnie's wind powers. It did not disappoint. It was getting close to day 100 and I was running out of time to search all over the map for something I could tame, so I guess I'll just shove a bunch of the souls I've collected into this Omega Beacon and see what it pops out. First, I got this Omega Teleporter Packy. 
Yeah, no thanks. Next, I shoved in some summoner souls. And out popped this ultimate familiar yeti. I'm not sure what it does, but it's got almost half a million health. I'll take it. Landed nearby to shoot it, but it was already hot on my heels. After making some distance with my bird, I shot it again and again and again until finally it was mine. Now let's go see what you can do. This diplo should be perfect for testing. Turns out its special attack summons a bunch of bats, and they chewed through this diplo like a flock of flying piranhas. Let's see what we can get with 99 elemental souls. Ooh, that'll do just fine. The Omega Ice Dinopithecus was just as mad as the Yeti. I was a bit worried about its ice blasts at first, but its aim was horrible. But that's okay, I won't complain. Now, this guy's part of the team. All right, let's give this beacon thing one more go. What happens if I put in 67 Nightmare Souls? Looks like I got a Prime Zombie Scorpion. Eh, no thanks. Spent some time chilling with Blue that night. Then spotted this ultimate uncontrollable dire bear early the next morning. With over a million health and 120,000 damage, I couldn't pass up trying to tame it. But as I tried to find a good spot to shoot it from, this raptor came up and ruined my day. Okay, let's try that again, but with fewer raptors this time. Turns out this bear was too smart for my usual tricks, so I headed off to build a trap instead. Not so smart now, are you, Mr. Bear? Why don't you just stay right there? Ran out of darts about halfway through. Not sure why, this thing's only got about 5 million torpor. It might have taken me all day, but eventually I knocked it out. The uncontrollable creatures are, well, uncontrollable, and will attack anything nearby that doesn't belong to you. But they get an extra times 25 on all their stats, making them extremely tough. <laughs> Plus, it's kind of cute that it just wanders around and won't listen. Back at base, I got out all my new super dino, then leveled them up a bit and healed them with my fairy turtle, Tinkershell. Ended up naming the baboon Icy, the Yeti, Billy, and the bear was a bit trickier because he wouldn't hold still, but I ended up naming him Ted. One day left, and I'm going to spend it trying to tame this Omega Meteor Argentavis. And it does exactly what you'd think it would, raining meteors from the sky when you attack it. It's 1.6 million torpor was going to take a few darts, and I didn't have any to waste. So I built a trap, but turns out that was a waste. This bird has no interest in me. Even when I shoot it, she just gets distracted and ends up attacking something else. Well, that's okay. Guess we'll just do this the old-fashioned way. It didn't take too long to finish it. I think I'll name you Comet. After that, I wasted my time making another trap I wouldn't use. I thought I might be able to tame this Omega Spectral Griffin, but instead of chasing after me, it ghosted me instead. Guess I'll just spend the rest of my evening upgrading my saddles for the boss battle tomorrow. This mod even has special armor for creatures that don't take saddles. Day 100 was finally here, so I headed over to my Omega Beacon to summon the boss. I threw out a few of my best super creatures, keeping a few back in their soul traps just in case. Then stuck 100 elemental souls in with a wind Omega soul to summon the basic tier wind boss. And I'm pretty sure I should be able to use the soul it drops to turn my Omega wind bear into a godlike creature. It didn't look like it was doing too much damage at first until it used its wind blast for 100,000 damage. I flew through to use Blue's Supernova, then stopped to watch for a bit when I realized we were already halfway through its 5 million health. It was doing some pretty serious damage though and I started to worry so I flew through with Blue again. Yep, that ought to do it. Yeah. This is so easy. <laughs> As soon as it was done, though, Ted decided he wanted to have a little bit more fun. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Stop it. Where are you going? The battle was won, and it was time to use this soul to make an extra, extra super creature. But wait, this isn't the soul I need to make a godlike creature? Turns out I need to put this soul into a god egg and summon the wind god. Then use its soul to make a godlike creature. Do I have enough stuff to make a god egg? Why, yes, yes, I do. Looks like we've got another fight on our hands tonight. I threw out all of my best super dinos this time, except for Winnie, my Omega Wind Bear. I can't turn it into a godlike creature if it's dead. 
With my super team assembled, I set down the egg and placed the boss soul inside. I didn't know it yet, but I'd skipped a few steps in this mod. I'd bitten off a bit more than I could chew with this crazy wind god. In a matter of about 10 seconds, it roasted all but three of my super dino team. We managed to get just a few hits in before the next one bit the dust. Now I've just got my two RGs left, and apparently it's after us. It was too fast to run from, but when I turned around to fight it, it roasted me like a marshmallow. It got distracted by my RGs again, and I thought for a moment I might escape. I really like Blue, and I don't want to lose him too, but it wasn't long before the Wind God caught on and came after me instead. My stamina was out, and I tried to land to use some potions, but in my panic, I used them on myself by mistake. That's gonna help a lot. This is not good. Not good at all. I eventually figured it out and got back off the ground, but both my RGs were gone now and it was just me and the boss. Blue's supernova was great, but I just didn't have enough health to deal with the damage the boss was dealing out. I would stop and use a modded health potion on my dino, but it was doing almost as much damage as I was healing. I persevered through the night and into the morning of day 101, trying to outmaneuver it and blast it when I could. I'd barely made a dent in its health though and was about to give up when I accidentally got it stuck under this bridge. I had a tiny bit of hope I might actually be able to defeat it now until I realized that when I was taking a break to heal, it was regaining health too. After that realization, this battle was starting to feel even more pointless. And to make matters worse, it was free now and Blue was almost at his end. My last 100 days ended bad, and if this one did too, I was going to be mad. In a last ditch effort, I tried to trap it again, using my very last Omega Health Potion just in time. The Wind God wasn't happy about it, but it was trapped again. The Wind God wasn't very happy about it, but it was stuck again. Maybe you're not that smart after all. But even with it stuck, I still couldn't do enough damage to make up for all it was healing. Every time I healed, it healed, and then we just started again. Then, just as I used the last of my other potions, I landed nearby and it hit me right through this rock. Wait, does that mean I can hit you through this rock? It definitely feels a bit cheaty, but I'm not gonna pass up the opportunity. I mean, it's day 101. Does this even count? I did the math and I had to hit this thing about 1,300 times before I finally killed it. And when it was almost done, I flew in to do it the right way. I'd argue this definitely doesn't count, but that's not gonna stop me from taking this god soul and turning my Omega Wind Bear into a god bear. It doubled all her stats and turned her glowing white just like the wyvern. To be honest, I definitely don't think this upgrade was worth the trouble, but the journey sure has been fun. There's plenty more where that came from though, so if you liked this adventure, be sure to go check out another one.